Are you guys ready? Three, two, I put an arrow on my head, and one. Paul Varghese! Thank you. Ooh, hey, here we go. <laughs> By the way, I'm glad to be in a big city. I'm so glad to be in a big city. Uh, I performed in a city so small, call it a town, right? Where I called an Uber to the show. Uh, I go there, they call an Uber back from the show. Two hours later, exact same Uber driver. <laughs> he didn't even say hi. He goes, as I was saying. <laughs> I got the vaccine too. I got the vaccine, got the double dose, okay? I don't, I don't care if you got it. Here's what happens when you get it. People always do this. Which one did you get? <laughs> Pfizer? Ooh, that's the good one. How do you know? Did you try all three? <laughs> right, like a vaccine Goldilocks? Let me break down the vaccine. Pfizer is the iPhone. Moderna is the Android. Johnson & Johnson, Cricket Wireless. <laughs> Anybody surprised they got recalled? I wasn't. <laughs> Pfizer gave us Robitussin, Advil, Viagra. Moderna does stem cell research. Johnson & Johnson, Q-tips and baby shampoo. Why is everybody so mad? I don't understand that. Always, everybody always hates the president, no matter who's in office. They hate him. Hate's, hates a strong word. Nobody hates him. We disagree with what he's doing, okay? People in, this, people in South America, the Middle East, they hate their president. Here, we have to have a poll to measure the president's approval rating. You're in South America, the Middle East, you want to know your approval rating? Here's what you do. You look outside the window of your palace. You see 10,000 people setting cars on fire and throwing rocks at a tank, you're in the low teens. <laughs> you know how mad you have to be to throw a rock at a tank? <laughs> right? We, we all know paper beats rock, right? <laughs> tank really beats rock, okay? <laughs> you hate the government, just pack your shit and flee. That's what, you hate the country, just, just leave. That's what people in Vietnam did. People from Vietnam fled here. Nobody here would ever flee to Vietnam. We'd be there the very first day, be like, wait a second, you guys don't have a Krispy Kreme? And then fly right back, you know what I mean? <laughs> we don't even know how to flee. Anybody here fled recently? <laughs> Vacation don't count, you can't. You can't flee and flee back. Flee is a, flee's a one-way ticket, right? I don't know how to flee. Other people swim through rivers and make boats. I make flight reservations. I, I'll flee first class. And I'll do it on Southwest Airlines where friends flee free. Get some frequent fleer miles. You know, Cubans, when they come in, they put all their clothes in their body. Because that's all they have. We put our clothes in our body because we want to spend $35 to check that bag in at the airport. <laughs> Rednecks hate the government all the time the most, and they have no excuse not to flee. Their homes are mobile. <laughs> we don't even have time to flee. We're too busy updating Facebook and Twitter. You think Mexicans, you know, are updating their Facebook status before they come here? Carlos Gonzalez is sneaking into America. <laughs> Border Patrol likes this status. <laughs> I saw my favorite Facebook update today. Uh, you ever seen this? Uh, who wants to hang out? I love that. Who wants to hang out? Posted six hours ago. <laughs> zero comments. Zero likes. I laugh every single time. And then I go back in three months and like it. That's what I do. <laughs> Wish I saw this earlier. That's what I mean. <laughs> Facebook made people think they're important. Social media made people think they're important. You know? My niece wrote this. Don't check your emails. My Facebook got hacked. Somebody hacked my Facebook. I'm like, no, the FBI. The Pentagon gets hacked. You don't know how to log out. <laughs> hacked. Like ISIS is in a cave in Syria. Everybody, gather around. 
It only took me two and a half years. I finally have access to Priya's Facebook. <laughs> Some guy runs in. Hassan, I know when the next drone strike is coming. Yeah, but look what she wore for Halloween. Look at this. Uh. <laughs> you ever had those friends who make their entire weekend plans based off a of Groupon? Yeah. We're going to go skydiving. I got a Groupon. I'm not going discount skydiving. That's a... <laughs> Right? That's a trash bag and sweatpan drawstrings. We'll save 200 bucks. We can use it on the funeral. They gotta... <laughs> YouTube sucks. They put everything on YouTube, man. I thought I would be famous off YouTube. My video has 10,000 hits. You, you know what has 2.2 billion on YouTube? Sneezing Panda. There's 204 people in this room right now. Imagine how packed this place would be if people knew Sneezing Panda was going to show up. In fact, I'm quitting comedy tonight. This is my last show. This special, my last show. I'm going to come back tomorrow, bring a panda with allergies, sell this bitch out. <laughs> Yelp is the worst. Yelp. We all know. I know, exactly. I'm Christian. All the churches in my area are yelped. All of them. As Christians, we're told not to judge, right? But like, unless it's online, then it's okay. I don't even know. St. <laughs> Mark's Cathedral in Dallas, four stars out of five. I'm like, what does that even mean? Like, <laughs> like no gluten-free options at communion? What does that mean? <laughs> Is this Body of Christ locally sourced? Is this... You ever see that restaurant review? I hate this restaurant. Lost my iPhone. One star. <laughs> you seen that? I write back. I love this restaurant. Found an iPhone. Five stars. That's what I do. That's what I do. That's what I do. I'm a problem solver, guys. I do pull in a really... That's not me. I'm very soon. No. No, no, that's dope. That's poor restaurant. Oh, no, no, I don't know if this is it. I don't, I don't know, I'm sorry. But, bro, if you saw what he just showed, he goes, it says vegan tastes India. He's like, is this, is this you? I'm like, I mean, I, I've tasted India. Look, I'm, I'm brown, man. They want to, I'm, I live in the South, man. They want to give all the brown people. They, why would you get rid of Indian people like me? Without us, you wouldn't have an iPhone. <laughs> right? Well, that's what the I in iPhone stands for. You don't believe me? Put your thumb down. Delete an app. What do all the other icons do? <laughs> I get it. I get it. I mean, I'm in the middle of all this shit. I get it. I'm brown. I get it, man. I, I got, look, look, I'm like considered midnight dark in my culture, okay? I got an Indian friend darker than me, he's like 1.45 a.m. He's like... <laughs> Seriously, he's like last call dark. <laughs> we got a big argument, he didn't believe a black lives matter. Like, dude, you are the blackest life. <laughs> you matter to me? <laughs> Yelling at me in front of everybody, all lives matter. I'm like, all of them? Have you been to the DMV? <laughs> all of them. I went to the DMV. They asked for my birth certificate. Where's your birth certificate? Like, honey, I am my birth certificate. <laughs> right? I am certifiably birthed. I, I wiped off, put on some pants. I need proof you were born. Will we bring my mom? I'll bring my mom. She'll, she'll tell you all about the delivery. Just coming up in her house shoes. You know how much suffering I went through with this boy in delivery. 72 hours straight in labor. I had a Caesar section. You know what a Caesar, a Caesar section is? His name is Paul. I want to name him Julius because of the Caesar. The lady goes, no, I need proof you're born in this country. Okay, so you think I'm faking this accent. She thinks I'm faking this accent. Like, I, I, I practiced in the parking lot at the DMV. Like, okay, we are about to go into DMV. <laughs> we need to act like we are from America. Okay. 
Wipe the dirt off. Okay. <laughs> Keep the snake in the basket. <laughs> Stay in there. <laughs> and make sure the carpet doesn't fly. Okay, we all, everybody down. Snake down, carpet down. What's up? Okay, here we go. Take one. <clears throat> I'm here to do my license. Are we all panicking? <laughs> we all panicking. Here's what I'm trying to say. So she, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go get my birth certificate. Whatever. I'll drive three hours out of my way to get my birth certificate. I go back to the DMV. I'm not going to get the same lady. It's been six hours. What are the odds to get the exact same lady? I get the exact same lady. She goes, how can I help you? I didn't even say hi. I go, as I was saying. <laughs> I, I will say this one here. When you go when you land airport and they have the signs out and it says like Patel or stuff, they, when I walk down, they l instantly, they can't help, but they have to look at me, right? They have to think it's me, right? They have first, and I kind of just want to see where it goes. I just kind of want to just like one day just, and I think that's what we should do. I think we should just go. Let's just go. I got brown friends, they got beers down to here. They get mad when people give them shit at the airport. And I tell them, but you look like the dudes. <laughs> right? Who did that shit? How do you expect the airport to react? You can't walk into Target with a red shirt and get mad when people think you work there. <laughs> so white guys are amazing when it comes to facial hair. Brown guys still rock these Bin Laden beards. You never see one white dude with a Hitler mustache. <laughs> but being honest, white guys got together as a group at brunch. And after, <laughs> I'm guessing, I don't know, I wasn't there. I'm not invited. <laughs> and after some avocado toast, they were like, okay, listen guys, there's, there's a dude in Germany kind of missed this. Look up for all of us. You could look like a pedophile, just don't look like a. You could be a dick tickler, not a dictator. You got that, you got that? Yeah. I think we've made a lot of racial progress in this country. Because, you know, back in the days, I used to be other. <laughs> I don't know if your job applications worked. 20 years ago, it was white, black, other. It's a very lazy way to categorize people who aren't white or black. Like, two executives walk in, they're like, which one's James? The white guy? No. The black guy? No. The other guy. <laughs> if you're not laughing, it's because you're... White or black, you had no idea a third box existed. But, but that's where me and the Mexicans hung out, dude. It was very, it was very cramped. Well, look, we act like police brutality is worse than it's ever been. It's always been shitty. We just have better cameras now. You can film it on your iPhone. 15 years ago, oh shit. Hey, yo, when I developed this in two weeks at Eckerd's, you're fucked, bro. I gotta, I gotta go to a graduation. I gotta finish the role, but like... Next, next Saturday, when I come back from Montgomery Ward, you're fucking going down, bro. I've seen comics just bash on their wives and girlfriends. I'm like, you know, you still have to go home to these people. I always run by the stuff I say about her to her because I still have to go home to her. I got a white girlfriend. She's great. I love her to death. You want to love about her? She doesn't understand racism. She thinks we can run outside in public. <laughs> My honey, we got to run side by side because if you get ahead of me, it just looks like. <laughs> Is it true? My girl is so bad when it comes to food. You know, she wants to be a pescatarian. You know what pescatarian is? You eat animals that are in the water. Okay, so if I push a cow? <laughs> if I trip a pig into a puddle? She gets mad. Nine billion chickens were slaughtered last year. That's horrific. Well, that means 18 billion wings were served. And that's, that's fucking delicious. And, <laughs> right? And we dip them in ranch. Yeah. Ranch. We named the sauce we dipped them in after the place we raised them on. 
She thinks broccoli is delicious. I'm like, fuck no. Cake is delicious. Broccoli is delicious compared to starvation. If vegetables are so fantastic, how come when someone falls into a coma, that's what we compare them to? <laughs> you guys... You guys groaning way too much. <laughs> Fucking laugh. I know, I know vegetables don't move, but neither does dessert. <laughs> Would you ever insult dessert like that? Yeah, Mima hasn't moved to eight months. She's a total cookie. I'm like, well... <laughs> can we bring some spray whip? She's... Where I'm at in my age, in my, I'm 40, what am I now, 40, 44? I think they're just happy that I'm dating someone because... In our culture, if you're dating somebody, you got to marry that person. Like, you don't introduce your parents to somebody new every Christmas, which I was that guy to my girlfriends before who weren't Indian. Every, every Christmas, I was introduced to new, and which is weird because, like, my, my girlfriend doesn't even know my parents' first names, but I know all of my ex-white girlfriend's parents' names. So I know Bob and Kathy, you know? I know Frank and Karen. I know them. All she knows is, hi, Paul's dad, hi, Paul's mom, and that's, that's where, that's how, that shows you how many people that I've introduced to my parents. My parents, they hate me because I'm not married. They yell at me all the time. Are you even looking for a girl? Are you looking? I look all the time. Looking's not the problem. They don't look back. <laughs> Trying to arrange a marriage for me, the girl they wanted me to marry, her parents were married in two weeks. I'm like, I'm going to go meet some girl in Mary here. I got to know her for at least a few years. My mom, she doesn't have that much time. <laughs> like, is she dying? Am I her make-a-wish? <laughs> they had arranged marriages. You guys know what that... They don't understand any marriage that wasn't arranged. They look down upon it. <laughs> Your cousin Asha got married. Was it arranged? Oh, no, they fell in love. They had a love marriage. We were so disappointed. <laughs> That's my dad jumps in. That's the problem. All this love marriage and then divorce. I've been with your mother 52 years. I don't love her. <laughs> we are just hanging out. <laughs> Their neighbors think it's so romantic. Oh my God, 52 years. When did you two first meet? At the wedding. Our eyes met, we exchanged rings. That's when I know she was the one. <laughs> Actually, her dad gave me money to convince me that she was the one. That's how we met through Cash App. <laughs> Here's the thing about my folks. My folks are so Christian, they've never cussed one day in their life. Never said one swear word. I'm basically trying to tell my, my mom, don't find a woman for me, I'll be fine. She's basically trying to tell me not to be a slut. This is how my mom does it. Okay, you can be social. Just don't, don't be too social. You can talk, you just don't talk to everybody. Yep. Me and your father didn't talk until after we got married. We, we barely even talk anymore. I think he has a speech impediment, I think. How many people are you talking to right now? <gasps> you need to talk to your father. Like, are we still talking about fucking? <laughs> Thank you guys very much. Have a great night, guys. Appreciate it, guys. <laughs> Any room that's anti what COVID is, anti social distancing, is the best comedy room ever. So, all jammed in, everybody's can't move. It's like, I want this place for, because if it's 80 people, if it's two people, if it's a hundred, it still feels exactly the same. I mean, I'm glad more than one person came in. During COVID, I literally was like thinking like, are these signs from the universe? I should kind of stop. Comes from kind of self-absorbed in that sense of like, what, what, are, what is the universe trying to tell me? Well, the universe gave the world a pandemic to tell Paul Varghese that he can no longer have a career. That's what it, he killed, he kills, 500 million people to tell you that's how much you suck get off stage never perform again but to have these kind of moments it's like okay maybe they you know maybe it wasn't really that self-absorbed by the way the urine in the in the in the odor is not philly it's me pissing my pants just so you know just so you know in case you're wondering the stench of philly it's me 
<laughs> hey. I don't know who these people are. So last night, I didn't do shit. I went to go see the show here, okay? And I grabbed some Thai food, and I have the Thai food in the bag, and I'm in the, I'm right the 24th floor, and I'm walking in Sinesta, and this, the security guy's like, hey, man, you delivering? Dude, him saying, like, you work for DoorDash is, like, the most, like, humiliating. And then he felt, I know he felt bad, because he was probably, like, I would like to think he felt like shit, you know? But he should. It's almost like karmic retribution, the fact that, a kid from Dallas is performing in Philly for his, like his first ever special. It's almost like if like a George Bush had like an inauguration in Baghdad. You know what I mean? It's the same. That's. I don't even think that's exaggerating. 